name is Paul Shirk, and I'm the father figure in this art trio that we have going on here. So I'll pass the buck. My name is Mason Shirk, Paul's son. I probably started doing art because of you a long time ago. Go ahead. I'm Nick Ellis, I'm his stepson, and like sixth grade I started doing art, and then he made me do art more. So thank you for making <laughs> me do a seventh grade arts class. And he was very good at it. Uh, there's only a few pieces we have here next tonight, and all were done between 8th and ninth grade, um, but they're pretty exceptional pieces, so we brought them along on board. And uh, my inspiration, it just, I think I was just born with it. My mom used to say I was always playing on the floor with a coloring, you know, coloring book, or she'd give me markers or paper, and I would just draw for hours, and it just kind of stuck with me through life. And I think he picked up that trait as a youngster. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just kept it going. Elaborate. <laughs> Elaborate. All right. Yeah, it wasn't until I got out of the military that I really started doing it. Um, and then I just took off. I had wood rings and paintings. Which I don't have any paintings here this time. Ink. Ink. And I started tattooing last year, um, which has really taken off. It's really fun. So I got some fake, fake tattoos I've done on fake skin. As well as some photography of ink that he's done. And we'll have some live, potentially some live models of some ink. As well. Hopefully, yeah, see what I can do. Yeah, uh, my art is just nice. Batman, some books that I've read, video games that I've played inspired me to make them. It's nice. Yeah, other than that, uh, he really got me on with a wood burning kit and some uh, pastels, if I remember correctly. So, thank you for that. This is a large rose made out of 3 16 uh, sheet steel, um, cut with a handheld plasma cutter. And I believe I called it large because of the, the weight. If you go much bigger with plasma and steel, the weight becomes extreme. This, this piece is pretty heavy, having, having, having two layers. And put a little dimension in it by um, um, furring it out away from the back piece. And the center of the row is actually, it's hard to tell on camera, but it's more dimensional. And it's actually just mounted with magnets. And I can remove the uh, center piece with magnets. It gives you an idea how sturdy and strong that piece is but um, I, I didn't want to drill through and tap um, with anchors in the center of the rows so I decided to go with magnets on it I have a friend that has a weld shop that I can always go out there and you know mess around at his place but um, this piece I did in my garage yeah I just have a variety of tools and um, pretty comfortable area workstation in our garage and and uh, that's where I do most of my work um, it's a small plasma torch, um, uses air and plasma to blow through the steel. Um, it's kind of, it's hard to describe it when it's not here, but it's just a handheld device, kind of L-shape, and um, you've got to put some lenses on because the uh, arc will, will blind you. So just put the proper eye covering on and, and protect yourself with some leathers and, and just start cutting away. Yeah, this one's actually kind of a rougher cut on purpose to give it the uh, textured effect. Um, you know, you can grind off and sand and polish um, these to perfection if you put the time in on them. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about this leopard right here because back when COVID first hit, I had lost my job and I was bored and unemployed, so I started wood burning again for the first time in a couple of years. And I took a time-lapse video and posted on Facebook and it just kind of blew up. And this leopard right here started my entire art career for the past year and a half, which has led to not only a bunch of orders that I've sold, but me tattooing and working in tattoo shops. And uh, that's all thanks to this thing right here. So this one's kind of special to me. But from this one, when I sold this one, I got an order for this elephant. So this elephant was actually the first piece I sold, uh, commission-wise. And then this octopus is right after. And then this elephant was shortly after that. So this one leopard sparked all of these pieces right here. Which this one's one of my favorites. I like that elephant. So the first piece, uh, which is Batman, uh, I got inspiration from playing, uh, revisiting on my old DS, I had the Lego Batman game. And so I played through that eighth grade year and that was super fun. And then at the end of it, we got to make one of these. And I was like, oh, I need to make Batman. I had just played there, I was like, yeah, it's super hyped. And the eye was, uh, it was just a part of the curriculum, so that was nice. I'm like, okay, I'll take a picture of my own eye, and then 
I know, right? It was pretty great. <laughs> this piece I did because I've always had a kind of a fascination for faux dogs and the, and the myth behind them. And um, I had a large canvas and I wanted to try my hand more at uh, acrylic. So this actually has multiple layers of acrylic um, in it. It's kind of hard to see off the camera, but if you were up close to it, you can actually see dimension and texture in, in the paint. Um, the, the colors are, are traditional um, colors of faux dogs. You typically see a teal with uh, some gold accents. Uh, the gold eyebrows and uh, the hair. But um, anyway, one of my favorite pieces, and uh, it's been hanging in my pool room for a while, and I and, uh, think I'm ready to go ahead and put it in the show and uh, let the public see it. Uh, they guard your house from, from negative spirits coming into your house. Typically, you see them on the entrances to the home. Uh, there's a male and a female uh, counterpart. If you look at the uh, the sphere under the male is a solid sphere, but the sphere under the female is actually a pup on its back. So you can see the eyes and the hair. And the, so the female is guarding the pup and the male is guarding the sphere. And it keeps the spirits out of your house. I call this piece the Patriot as I feel patriotic when I look at the colors and the patterns. Um, this is made out of um, clear fur material and it's a geometric uh, cut pattern. I saw some of this work being done and decided to try my hand at it and um, enjoyed making it. It's a lot of work, a lot of prep and planning and, and straightening out, but um, I, I think it came out to be a wonderful piece. The colors um, looked a little whitewashed, but they are uh, done like that on purpose. I actually use fabric dye to dye this material. So it's like a writ or write fabric dye you can buy from any Walmart or Target and uh, with a clear polyurethane finish on it and uh, it makes for a beautiful stain. I, I think I, I get bored with one medium. Um, I, I don't understand people that can just paint all the time. I mean I, I, I paint something and after a couple months I'm, I'm, I'm done painting for a while but I'm kind of stir crazy so I want to do something and um, I have skills in lots of different areas, so I try to use those skills into the artwork. So carpentry comes out in this piece. So this gorilla, another one of my favorite pieces, took me about 40 hours to complete, um, and I had to do it twice because I ruined the first one. So about 80 hours I put into this gorilla, but it was worth it because this one came out so much better. And uh, this guy, the guy that bought the elephant over there was the same one that purchased this one. So he's doing like this whole African themed room in his house. So it fits right in. So the wood burning, there's a pyrography tool, which is basically like a pin where the tip gets really hot so you can draw on wood. Um, and it took me, I don't know, seven, eight years of practicing and ruining projects before I learned how to actually do it properly. So a lot of years in the making. So Lincoln was, I had read Lincoln, it was just the story of Lincoln that year, right after the Odyssey. And so I was going, okay, I'll just draw Lincoln because it was, you had to do a project on the presidents. So after reading the book, I decided to do Lincoln, which took me about a month and a half. Hemingway, though, was the final project of it. And we had to use either color pencil or pen. And so, I chose a blue ink pen to do it, and it took too long. <laughs> I took it home multiple times and worked on it because I just couldn't get the eyes right, and it just really bugged me about that. But other than that, it turned out amazing. This uh, painting I did, um, I think I'd call it a red tree with reflection, and um, I actually just needed a piece in my dining room at the time that had some red um, accent in it because we have a red wall in the uh, in the room and I was trying to find a piece of artwork to go there and I was struggling finding anything available for purchase that had those accents so I decided to create this on my own and it has hung for a while in our dining room and it's um, time to say goodbye to it I think and let somebody else enjoy it but um, I was real proud of, of this this tree when it came out I used a couple different varieties of uh, texture in the, in the leaves, um, so 
there's some small sponge work and some brush work in the leaves. So back um, about a year ago, July of 2020, I had a buddy who said, uh, saw some of my artwork and was like, I want you to tattoo me. So I bought a tattoo kit, and these right here are silicone fake skins, which allows you to practice tattoos without ha being in real skin. And this is the first piece I've ever tried. It, um, first time I touched a tattoo machine, I, I did this. And then that was actually the first tattoo I did. I implicated that on his calf. And then I did this one just to practice, because I'd never done a face before. And I had a lady who wanted a Sacagawea, so I practiced this before I tattooed her. And then I just did these two for fun. I like doing animals. But they are, this fake skin is so hard. Real skin is so much easier. Yeah, I really enjoy, really enjoy tattooing. Uh, so I do a stencil. So basically I draw it first and then I apply it to like an ink paper, which transfers ink to the back of the drawing. And then I can apply it to the skin or the fake skin. So I have like a stencil to go off of. So I'll freehand a stencil, but I'll never freehand a tattoo. It's not worth the risk of messing up. Yeah, yeah I learned. Um, I got my kit, came with a book on how to be clean and how to not transfer diseases. And then I practiced a couple pieces um, and then I did my first tattoo a week later. And then I got a job offer at a studio. So I've been, I've worked in two studios so far and I'm looking for a third one. Um, but yeah, I just kind of took off. Now that's how I make my living. <laughs> so this is my first tattoo. As you saw on the fake skin, it's the uh, lion head and the kind of diamond shaped background and then shortly after that one I did this owl here in his other calf so it's the same guy in these two pictures but this was the first piece I actually put together on my own and kind of combined multiple different images into one so it was really fun to experiment with um, this is a spine tattoo that I did and I didn't realize how hard tattooing in just red would be I'm trying to get different shades but I feel like I pulled that one off pretty good and then these two are two of my favorite tattoos I've ever done I got my elephant over here and then a willow tree that came out. I, don't know, I did this one almost a year ago. This is my sixth tattoo and it's still one of my favorites. Okay, this is uh, the American Stogie. Um, did this piece for uh, a friend on, um, you know, he purchased it, but this is what he asked for. And he is a cigar fan, so I put the large cigar in the, in the mouth and uh, had it burn up and plume red, white, and blue smoke, um, calling it the American Stogie. And um, I love the colors. The medium is acrylic and it is layered acrylic. Uh, it just means uh, one layer dries and you put another layer on top of it. Um, you, could, you can do it wet, but um, it ends up blending a lot when you do it wet, so you, sometimes you've got to take steps in the process. So layer, layering it with acrylic. So I have two um, collage pieces that are made uh, purely of cigar labels. Um, some high-end cigars and some low. I, I, I more took it for artistic um, looks and colors in the cigar labels and did a um, couple of collages. I did a small collage and a large collage. And uh, both of those were purchased um, by fellow cigar smokers. Mother and Children um, picture that I had done with charcoal and it was the only uh, or the first thing I ever really did with a charcoal medium and it was many years ago and uh, it will be on display and, I'll, and it'll be for sale and, uh, and it'll be hard to let it go but it really shows a nice contrast in the charcoal off the white paper. Uh, there's some pencil drawings that will be on display. Uh, the polar bear is a real simplistic drawing just in graphite on white paper but if you like polar bears, you will like this picture. They're my favorite animal out of the kingdom. And um, so I've done that one. I did Poseidon for my stepson. It was his favorite character. Um, so it's just a simple pencil drawing. There's another one of a warrior. Um, I got away from the, the charcoal and went more graphite because you can do some different, um, different lightnesses without the mess. You can do the contrast without the mess of charcoal, um, but I might go back and do some more charcoal eventually.